Talk to me about Baylor TCU. TCU goes on the road. They're getting slapped around early by Baylor. The, the Bears jump out to a big lead. They slowly leak oil coming down the stretch. But even then, it took a Max Duggan effort to drive the Horn Frogs in the field goal range. Great clock management by this TCU program. They're able to kick a 41-yard field goal. They trotted the field goal kicker out with 13 seconds left. He ends up putting toe to leather with four seconds left to nail the field goal as time expired. This is kind of same song, different verse for TCU, though. They have trailed a lot, and I'm not giving any sort of credence to what the playoff committee has thrown around <laughs> about them. That is not what they're doing. Careful how you phrase it. <laughs> but I will say, well, no, I phrase it intentionally because – while they have trailed a lot, they continue to win these games. I'm not I'm not questioning their playoff eligibility. I am starting to question if they get throttled in, in round one. If if it's Georgia, if they somehow stay at number four, or whether the, whoever the number two seed ends up being, I'm starting to question their ability to truly be an elite team because they continue to struggle and need big time comebacks against very good teams. I think Kansas State is a very good team. Texas, obviously, they didn't need a comeback, but they, they just play close games. It's a different style, and eventually that coin lands on the other side. I want to be completely fair to them. They were missing Kendra Miller and Quentin Johnson for a big part of this game, right? A substantial part of this game. Down the stretch, they're missing their two best players on offense. That's not to shade Max Duggan, but a lot of his production comes from the fact that he can hand the ball to Kendra Miller and you know, throw it up for Quentin Johnson. So just to be clear, they're missing those guys down the stretch. Huge props to Tay Barber and Savion Williams coming in. Tay Barber had 108 receiving yards in this game, and a lot of that came after Quentin Johnson hopped out. So big props to them for stepping up and giving Duggan someone to throw to. I definitely underestimated how competitive the Bears were going to be in this rivalry game, and it was miserable weather too. So, you know, you'd still want to see them produce. You still want to see them do what they can do. But, you know, that those situations do tend to provide less com- less uh, less than ideal situations in a more competitive game than you might necessarily expect. So good job to Baylor for keeping it competitive in a situation where they were looking to get revenge for what TCU did to them last year. You know, kind of flip the script. I still cannot believe they chose to run the ball on that last offensive play. I was losing my mind. As soon as they give that ball, I'm like, what are you doing? I actually started screaming at the television, and then they trot the field goal team on, and I'm like, you're going to blow your chances at a playoff because you chose to run the ball instead of just give your kicker a chance to get out there and set himself up. Trots out onto the field. Griffin Kell has ice in his veins. He was money. With the game on the line, he had to run out there, set up, not do his little take your steps back and scoot to the side. None of that stuff. Just stand somewhere close to it. And he nailed that thing. So good job to him. Massive props to him. Just absolute assassin out there at the kicker spot. We don't talk enough about college kickers. You know, for as bad as college kickers can be sometimes and as bad as they can, you know, lose a game for you. Griffin Kell should get a huge chunk of praise for how this game ended up going for the Horn Frogs. So good job. Survive in advance. Want a much better showing next week if you want to feel good about TCU's chances. Yeah, I watched that last sequence inside my local Trader Joe's, not a sponsor, could be. And I probably made some people a little bit concerned with just the way that I was reacting (laughs) to that whole sequence because it it was absolutely insane. You're right. I When they snapped the ball and ran it, I'm sure a lot of TCU fans had a lot of Vietnam style flashbacks to the Cowboys <laughs> game last January against the 49ers. Oh my gosh. And holy cow, that was scary, but it worked out. And I kind of disagree with the narrative. Mitch, I'm not picking on you, but you're kind of trotting out the narrative that I've seen a lot of Tennessee fans, especially before they ultimately got dominated themselves last night. They were kind of running with the narrative that TCU didn't belong in the discussion because they were getting dominated by Baylor. And when you watch that whole game, it was just kind of a defensive back and forth football game that TCU came out on top on. And TCU made some mistakes that really got magnified. Max Duggan threw an interception that I thought could have been called defensive pass interference. There were a couple 50-50 calls that didn't go TCU's way. And Baylor just really came to play. They had a great game plan in the first half. And I think we see this a lot of times with really good X's and O's coaches. 
they're going to come out and give these really good, uh, more maybe not more talented in this case, but heavily favored teams their best shot in the first quarter. And that's what Dave Rand and his staff absolutely did. Their first drive was 11 plays. It took five, over almost six minutes off the clock right off the bat and really put TCU on their heels, scoring a touchdown to go up 7 nothing. But TCU weathered that storm. They responded. And, and listen, good teams find multiple ways to win. And TCU has found ways to win when in a shootout. They've won defensive struggles. They've won games where they didn't play their best and they have injuries. So all this talk about TCU not being elite. If you are 11 and 0, you're an elite team. I'm sorry. You might not show it in the playoff against other elite teams because anything can happen. But if you're 11 and 0 in a power conference, you're elite. Yeah, like we're not talking about going 11 and 0 in the Mountain West or in the Sun Belt or something like that. So I'm really impressed with what they've been able to put together so far. And I credit Baylor for really making this game play into their favor as much as possible. They you mentioned yeah. Kendra Miller going down, but Baylor allowed just 115 yards on off, uh, uh, rushing yards uh, to TCU. And TCU wants to establish that run game and really uh, use that as their backbone, and they just weren't able to do it. And that's because Baylor played a really good defensive game plan. So I'm impressed with Baylor in this one. I'm more impressed with TCU weathering that storm. Also, fun note that I saw on social media after this one, I can't remember if it was the first team in FBS history or just the Big 12, but they are the first team to win seven games in a row by 10 points or less. My goodness. Wow. And they I, are cardiac frogs, and that's they just are. <laughs> the Hypno Toad has a flair for the dramatic. I, I'm certainly not questioning their legitimacy as a contender or their their spot for the playoff. Like, don't don't hear that. I am wondering if very similar to other, you know, three, four seeds, whatever they end up being seeded, that yes, they kept winning the games, but there were several, you know, there was there was a trend that stood out where it's like, okay, either they're off to a slow start. Well, typically for TCU, it's been a little bit of a slow start offensively, right? They fall down early or they're they're down at the half. They have to muster, they have to use the third, fourth quarter to put up multiple scores to overcome a deficit. My only point is you try and do that against a Michigan, an Ohio State, a Georgia, heck, even an LSU, if they're somehow able to get in, a USC. I don't know that they're going to be able to do that. Could they? Absolutely. They've done it so far. They've passed every single test. So it maybe is it a little unfair for me to be reserving judgment? Absolutely. But then again, we also wondered if this team was even going to make a bowl game, right? So they've been doubted from the beginning. Uh I'm I'm just at this point along for the ride. Certainly not rooting against them, just wondering, hey, does this team actually have what it's going to take to compete against a Georgia or a Big Ten champion or USC when all eyes are on at the highest stage of that program that they've ever been at? See, so Mitch, I agree with you in the sense that I don't think they have the guys in terms of just like what do we say, the Jimmies and Joes. But in terms of X's and O's, they're absolutely one of the best teams in this country. I think Sonny Dykes is not getting nearly enough credit for what he's been doing. At this point in the season, and this might be somewhat controversial, I think TCU is the team that I trust the most come playoff time. And that's not to say that I don't think that they're like, I don't think that they're necessarily the best team. But I mean, Georgia, they slipped up pretty big. They've done this a couple times where they've come out against far inferior talent and they didn't lose the game, but they didn't look good at all. I mean, they don't forget about that Missouri game throughout the year also. And there's some pretty glaring flaws like we've been talking about with some of these teams. For TCU, we can talk about a slow start or the game script being weird or, you know, maybe their players going down, not getting calls, but they still have been finding ways to win just about every single week at this point, despite something going wrong. Right now, obviously that could change. They could drop a game, but at this point, I feel like I know what I have out of TCU. I have a group of guys who are really competitive, who really want to be there, who have completely bought into their system. They know their job. They know what they're supposed to do. They, they do their role well. And when one guy goes down, someone else steps up and maybe that's not going to be good enough to compete with a much better athlete defense like a Georgia, or maybe they won't be able to keep up with Ohio state or, you know, if USC makes it, they may not be able to keep up with one of them. But at this point, I think I trust them the most to not come out, lay a goose egg and also not come out and just roll over. So I, maybe I'm totally off on this one, but I think I trust TCU the most at this stage of the season. Gracious. Yep. 